I remembered again. Um, and notice we've got scene two of episode 30 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming today again from YouTube because I am clearly a glutton for punishment. Let me just, before I explain to you what's going on, uh, let me just make sure that things are happening. Uh, already, hellos are coming through. <laughs> You're quick off the mark. John and uh, Ashfaq say hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now, I was hoping to be able to start today's episode by saying, you know, in one sentence, um, if you want to find out what this uh, series is about, just watch the beginning of yesterday's episode where I explained what I was doing this week. But YouTube decided to be extremely unhelpful and I now know because I've watched some of the footage back myself and also because of a few helpful emails and comments from, from you that, that we had um, audio issues, audio and video being out of sync, things cutting out for which I can only say I'm really, really sorry. Um, if, if, if you do, as you're watching, see that there are issues like that, please let me know. Um, who's that saying hello? Uh, Emma says hello, hello to you again. Or, or was it again? No, I'm not sure if it is again, sorry. Um, I am trying with YouTube again today, but if after today's broadcast I, we see that um, the, uh, the the quality of the live stream isn't very good, then I will have to revert to Facebook. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Because you would have thought that YouTube Live would be superior to Facebook Live, seeing as YouTube are the video people, but, but there we are, go figure. So, as briefly and succinctly as I can, so that we can get on to smelling the perfume, the whole point of this is to mark the fact that we've reached the 30th um, episode of Love at First Scent. Ali says, still uncannily out of sync. <sighs> Really sorry. I don't. I don't know what to say about that. Everything seems fine from here. Nick says greetings from Greece. Yasu, Nick, how are you? Uh, uh, Ashfaq says not sure, but it could also be to your um, mind. Yes, it, it could. But you know, there's never a problem with Facebook, whereas YouTube seems to play up. And also, the annoying thing about the YouTube setup is that I don't automatically um, have the facility to download or to keep a, a copy of the video. Whereas with Facebook, as soon as you do a live stream, no matter how long it is, you've got the option to sort of say, yes, save this video, because then at least you have your own high quality video and then you can upload it wherever you want and do what you like with it. So let's keep fingers crossed and hope for the best today. But even if I have to revert to the live stream being on Facebook for tomorrow, don't worry because I will make sure that a copy of the, of the video ends up on my YouTube channel, even though obviously it won't be live. But but what I was saying was that the whole point of this is to mark the 30th episode of Love at First Sent by essentially splitting it into a mini season of episodes. We started yesterday by looking at Perfumer Age. Today I'm going to look at the latest re release from Etalie Pot Orange, and I've committed to doing these until Sunday, so you're still going to get Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if, if, if I'm able to, because of commitments and family and life stuff, I'll try and do Monday and Tuesday as well so that we've got a full week. Um, which actually reminds me, uh, I, I should ask you what, if anything, you'd like me to cover. The options are, uh, tomorrow for instance, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a, 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 a kind of, a, a, a few thoughts on Armani Privé, because I don't think I've ever, ever written anything or said very much about Armani Privé. So tomorrow we're going to look at Armani Privé. That's decided because I kind of need to know what I'm doing. But other options include looking at two new releases from Parlez-moi de Parfum, which of course is the brand uh, founded by Michel Almarac and his sons, looking at some new Aqua Allegorias from uh, Garlin, obviously, uh, looking at a new Lutins, um, looking at a brand new brand, haha, see what I did there, that have just come out with four uh, cents, a quartet of cents, and they're called Kirin, New York, Kirin NYC. Uh, interesting cents, all four done by Mathieu Nardin. Um, so yes, have a think. What, what else could I, what else could I offer? Uh, a new brand as well called Ella K, or I think we're meant to pronounce it the French way, Ella K. Um, so have a think, have a think and let me know. 
usual rules apply. Please uh, fire questions and comments my way. Even if you're not watching our live stream, please uh, ask questions, please subscribe, please give me thumbs up, etc., etc. I, I get to usually get to every single comment in due course. And this will also be linked over to Facebook. So if you're watching on Facebook, please feel free to leave a comment. A few comments have come through now. Um, Anne says, hello from Pennsylvania. Goodness me, amazing. And Ashfaq says, speaking of Perfumer H, that's from yesterday, forgot to ask what are their prices? Ooh, uh, good question. If I, if I find out, because I think I have an email somewhere that tells me something about prices, then what I will do is I will go and leave that as a comment on the Perfumer H video, okay? Um, Sebi1001 says, hi, it's the first time I catch you live. Happy to be caught. Usually I see the recordings on YouTube after a while. Brilliant. Forever Fragrant Kid says, hello, hello back at you. Um, and Adam says, do you mean L'Odarmoise by Serge Lutens? Yes, I do. Well done. So have a think about whether you'd like me to do that one. Oh, you've already said that would be great. Ashfaq says, thanks a lot. Brilliant. You're welcome. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. we should start with this. This is a record, people. We haven't reached the six minute mark and I'm about to smell a perfume. And this this is what I would like to smell today. Brand new from Etalier Vaudrange. It is called Experimentum Crucis, or Crucis, pardon my Latin. Um, it, it's just a little dinky sample that we've got in here. Uh, a, um, I'm, losing, I'm losing the ability to speak. A lab sample, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this is composed by Quentin Biche. Uh, I haven't seen any official literature about it, even though I have got a press release for this one today. And Eta Livre d'Orange press releases usually are a joy to behold. So stay tuned, because I have a feeling I'm going to be reading you a story when we start doing this press release. But based on Quentin Biche's Instagram, if, if his Instagram is, is anything to go by, I think we can pretty safely assume that he is the author of this particular scent. He did uh, Fin du Monde, for um, for Etat Livre d'Orange, which I love. He also did a, a couple of other ones for them, which I'm less keen on, but he is generally a very, very exciting perfumer to watch. Uh, he did a beautiful piece of work for Ex Nihilo last year called Cuir Celeste. Um, what else has he done? He's done uh, work for Boucheron. He did Angel Muse for Mugler. I mean, you wouldn't have thought that it would be easy to really offer something genuinely new to the Angel story, but he did with Angel Muse. And of course, perhaps he isn't even the author of the scent we're going on about, but let's let, let's just have a genuine, genuine, you know, general momentary moment of appreciation, a momentary moment of appreciation. I need to slow down, don't I? Um, and speak properly. Take a breath, Perseleves. This is Experimentum Crucis from Et un Livre d'Orange. We will talk about it. We may talk about the brand, if you have anything to say about it or ask about it in a moment. But I think we should smell this. I got the sample last week and I did almost rip the envelope open and just think, oh, no, I want to smell it now. But I haven't. I genuinely, genuinely haven't smelt this. So this is a real case of is it going to be love at first scent. Here we go. Please let this be good because as a brand, I love this brand and I always want their stuff to be good. Let's make some room for this new one. I love this one too. Um, oh, wow, hang on, whoa. What would, let me ask you, what would you have expected from a perfume called Experimentum Crucis? Um, I'm very taken with the bottle design, but I must say, I thought the bottle with what look, I haven't seen a, 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 an actual bottle of it, all I've seen is images. That bottle with what looks like a kind of gold foil embossed design and, and it, I don't know whether the, the bottle itself is blue, whether they've gone for a blue bottle for this one. It just made me think that it was going to be a real massive heavyweight, um, you know, along the lines of Rien. But what I'm getting so far is a very, very, very pleasant and interesting, and I don't mean pleasant as in, you know, damning with faint praise, I mean genuinely pleasant and interesting, apple sort of rose with what feels like a kind of really leathery patchouli vibe coming through from underneath, 
And yes, if some of you are thinking patchouli rose, something along the lines of aromatics elixir, you wouldn't be far off because it feels so far anyway, like a lighter, more transparent, more modern aromatics elixir in some ways. Hmm. We shall see how it progresses, and, 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 and I want to find out what the, the point is about the name. Uh, a few comments came in. Ashfaq says yes to saint Lutins at any time, except from the last two to three year ones. Well, then you don't want a new one, <laughs> do you? Um, I found the media text, or whatever it's called, a bit pretentious. Oh, Lutins press releases. Again, they're fun too. Sebi says I would expect it to be dark and insincere. You mean that? Yeah, so would I. Um, but it's not at all. It's not at all dark. And may maybe that's maybe that's part of the point. Maybe it's to thwart our expectations. Uh, the, their release that came before this one, which you could just about see here, I am trash. I think that's another example of the brand just having a bit of a joke on us, because it's called I am trash, and there is a there is a link to some of the materials apparently being obtained from rubbish. Um, but but it actually smells like a very, very commercial, high street feminine. And I wondered if part of the point was that he's sort of making a comment about, I don't know, trashy people wearing trashy scents, or maybe people who don't know better wearing trashy scents, so that you're walking around in this thing that smells really, really commercial, and somebody says to you, what are you wearing? And you say, I am trash. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that the brand founder, Etienne Desfart, would, would would do, I think. Um, if you ever have a chance to hear him speak, by the way, do go along. He is much, much cleverer and wittier than 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 he lets on, and and he does let on that he is quite clever and witty. But I think I think he's the kind of guy who sort of works out a room in the space of about five seconds, and then knows how to play a room very well. But he is very, very, very entertaining. Yeah, this is getting this is getting um, barnyardy now, actually. Ah, um, not the first time the name... Oh, Ashfaq says I like Ria Intense. Do you know what? I I do like the Intense Ria, but I actually still prefer the original one. Um, although I can never wear it now because it is too closely associated with a member of my family for whom it is his absolute and complete and utter signature. And of course, if you've ever worn Ria, you know that you know, if somebody comes into your house wearing it, then that is all that your house smells of for the next three, four hundred years. Um, so, yeah, but but I do love it. Uh, not the first time the name is misleading, says Sebi. No, you're absolutely right. I think they're very, very playful with their names. Uh, Vladimir says, what's your favourite Hermesence? Do you mind if I kind of park that one to one side for a bit so that we just we, we, we stick to this? Otherwise, we'll go off all over the place. But perhaps I'll answer in, in the comments or check out the blog because I have written about the Hermesence on the blog. Quentin Biche seems to be on a roll, says John. Yes, yeah, I, I think he does seem to be. I think he is on a roll. And Ashfaq says, I'm an oud addict. Yeah, well, as long as it's good oud. Uh, I've bought Rien Intense and I have realised that I like Rien more as well, says Sebi. No, I, I don't blame you. I think the Intense is just trying a bit too hard, which is quite a claim to make about Rien. I'm liking this uh, so far. Oh, and I forgot to... Oh, stupid me. I forgot to put on this display here as well the, um, the one that they did. Somebody help me out. What's the, what's the scent that they did a couple of years ago with the designer? Roland Moray. And what was the scent called? Ooh, it was by Daniela Andrea. Really, really good. Um, it'll come back to me. Really, really good scent as well that they did. Th there are shades of that kind of... Une amourette. Une amourette. That was it. Thank you very much. Who said that? Dream of me no more. Yes. Th there is, in that kind of woody patchouliness that's coming through here from the Experimentum Crucis, there's a, there's a reminder of that as well. Une amourette, by the way, do check out, because I think at the moment it's available in a limited edition bottle that has been, each one has been individually hand decorated, hand painted, if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, let's check out the press release, which means that I think for a little while I will lose the comments. This is, the technology is just designed to mess with my head, because sometimes the comments come up here, sometimes they come up, etc, etc. John says, Queer Celeste and B683 were good releases last year. I don't know that one. What's B683? Mm, you have one up on me, sir. 
Not that it takes much to have one up on me. Okay, let us, um, let me come away from the monitor here. Uh, where am I going? Let us find this press release. I, I may not um, be able to read. Newton's Experimentum Crucis. Aha. Uh, see, this is this is this is where my ignorance comes through because I didn't don't I don't know about an experiment of Newton's called Experimentum Crucis. Let's find out. But there we go. The tagline is beyond light and gravity. So okay, uh, I, I I probably will not read all of this because they do get quite long. Unless of course we get into it and it's interesting. You know, it, if if I, if I see people switching off, then I'll know it's time to stop. The, it starts with a text by the, the the founder. Oh no, it is Quentin Biche because he it must be Quentin Biche because because he's got a, a bit of um, text here as well. Right. It began on a summer evening just a few years ago on the Rue Saint Martin in Paris. I was standing on the roof of a primary school, a symbol of the Republic, a place of beauty and wonder where children are taught fundamentals with benevolence. There, under the stars, I met a friend, an old scholar, <clears throat> a modern Diogenes, stuck somewhere between the 20th and 21st century. A sparkling eye, a lively and eclectic spirit, a lover of all mankind. I'm enjoying this so far, by the way. Please don't let us down, press release. From jazz to colour management to the gods of India to Normandy. A man who needs to be well met, who is abundant and curious. In short, a nourishing man. <clears throat> and I asked him, Jean. You who knows all the mysteries and history of men far better than any infamous huckster such as myself, if I asked who you believe to be the man who has most marked humanity by his contribution, his passage on earth, man or person, yeah, okay, fine, what name would you give me? And spare me the names usually invoked, like Einstein, Shakespeare, Pasteur, try to surprise me and take me somewhere others don't go. You want something new? Let me think about it. Jean said. He looked to the stars for a moment, then he whispered to me, Isaac. Yes, Isaac. Hmm. It's not that strange a choice though, is it? Although, I don't know, is Isaac Newton the first person that comes to mind? Do we have any physicists out there watching today? Um, I want to find out more. I don't know about you, but I want to find out more. Let's keep going a little bit. Um, okay, so this was, this was Etienne's answer, I think. But Isaac Newton, <clears throat> yes, I see no one else but this superior spirit to bequeath such knowledge to humanity. All this thought by a single brain without collegiate, without forfeiture. He alone led everything and bequeathed it to us. Yes, Isaac Newton gave us gravity, the foundations of mechanics, sublime reflections on light. His legacy is enormous and will underscore all the centuries to come. And all his work he summarized in a single title, in Latin a very beautiful title, Christic because essential. This title was Experimentum Crucis. Okay, and I, I, don't you just love how perfumery teaches you all this cool stuff? And I hope you will make good use of it, you naughty huckster. <laughs> you infamous peddler who would sell his own mother for a good word to smell. <laughs> this is my answer to your question. <laughs> Jean, I listened to you and I made it an orange extraordinaire edition for the glory of gravity. As a sl it's interesting though because actually perfume in a way works because of, um, because of evaporation, because of things in a way defying gravity. And this is a perfume inspired by gravity. A very et à livre d'orange idea, I like that. As a slogan, I have the idea beyond light and gravity, suggesting that love and the trail of ascent are stronger than gravity and time. It's post-rationalisation, okay, so what, we don't care. Uh, there is gravity in precious fragrant substances and diffraction in their wake, like rays of light through a prism. The poetry of this perfume can be traced to Isaac Newton. It rests on the boundaries of the sublime, <clears throat> somewhere between fundamental science and talk of love, between wave theory and the theory of light. It is seduction on the borderline, a crucial experience to wear on your skin as you walk a new path, filled with light, and make your way to the poetry of the rainbow. I've just realized, and that's signed Etienne Desfart, what an amazing day on which to be doing this, what with all of the pictures of the black hole, right? Um, not planned at all, I promise you. Um, this is getting really interesting. It, and it's, it, 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 it's sinking. It's like it's sort of started up in the heavens and is now kind of coming down lower and lower. It's quite funky now. I wonder if it's the naughtiest thing Quentin Biche has, uh, has done. Uh, a couple of paragraphs from the perfumer, and I think we ought to read them really. I'm sure you will indulge me. Legend has it, this is Quentin Biche, legend has it that an apple 
you stay there, that an apple from a tree fell on Newton's head, and thus the theory of universal gravitation was born. But then I began to imagine a different scene. Newton asleep under a rose bush, and instead of an apple, a flower falls, an enormous rose, a fully scented, fleshy rose, would he have felt it? Would he have plunged his face into the heart of the flower? And what would this mean for his theory? This scent a sheep. Yes, aromatics elixir. And a very precise and clear-cut formula, like something that falls on you sudden and direct, and never leaves you. A trail of scent that holds on Akigala wood and patchouli for a honeyed rose. And of course, Akigala wood is also prominent in une amourette, so everything comes full circle, and so we have a rosy chypre with a really funky base, and it is, it, it, like I said, you know, the sort of sinking thing, it's kind of coming down, so if the first few minutes are anything to go by, this is an absolute triumph of concept and execution, so well done Etienne, well done Quentin, and well done Et à Libre d'Orange. Um, I will of course do a, a, a blotter update, uh, afterwards just to find out if the whole thing has, has fallen apart and just collapsed. Um, let me just see what comments have been coming through. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, loads of comments. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Somebody saying, oh no, I'm late. Doesn't matter, you can watch afterwards again. Um, Newton would explain the Apple notes, says Cali Jazz. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've never tried this brand, says Raza. Oh, you need to check them out. You seriously do need to check them out. Um, R oh, you're telling me that your scent of the day, Raza, is uh, Epice Marine from Hermès. Uh, I reviewed that a few years ago on my blog. You'll find a link to Princeton about Newton's experimentum crucis on Google. Thank you very much. Um, Adam says, why would he sleep under a rose bush? <laughs> I know that, that actually will take some doing, because rose bushes aren't exactly like trees, are they, that, 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 that allow you sufficient room for a peaceful afternoon slumber. And Ashfaq is also telling us that this is scent of the day is Baikal Gris from Arij Ladore. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, I think, unless I discover after the fact that YouTube has been messing with us, I think that maybe things today haven't gone too badly. We're almost at the 25 minute mark. I've done a press release. I've had a chat with you. I've smelled a perfume. It's kind of looking good. So what I would like to do is to just uh, say a few shout outs to the people who uh, watch and regularly comment. But first of all, a very, very special hello to Riyadh. Um, we met in London at a shop that probably should remain nameless, but thank you very, very much for uh, coming over and, 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 and saying hello to me. It was really, really kind of you to take the time to do that. Forever Fragrant Kid says, you are good, no sound issues, thank, thank you very much. Um, and also shout outs to, I was going to say, you know, Reza, but obviously we've, we've interacted with each other anyway. Thank you so much to Bill, to Peggy, to Liz, to Gunmetal. Um, Ashfaq says sound and videos are in sync today. Okay, go figure. Hope, so, so I think what we will do is we will go with YouTube again tomorrow and probably tomorrow it'll let us down, but hopefully not. And tomorrow it'll be Armani Privé. So thank you very much indeed. See you, oh yes, the time. Tomorrow, an hour earlier, okay? So Forever Fragrant Kid, I don't expect you to wake up that early because it's going to be even earlier <laughs> over there in the States. So tomorrow it's going to be midday UK time on YouTube Live, which will be 3 p.m. Dubai time, which will be 7 a.m. New York time. Yes, it must be. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in. Over and out. Bye.